Hello! I am MPJ. Stars! You are watching Fun Fun Punch. In this series, we are learning Haskell together. Together, I don't know Haskell, so we are learning it through a free ebook called Learn You a Haskell. There's a link to it in the description below. In case you randomly stumble over this video and you're confused, you can view the entire series from the beginning by clicking the I in the upper corner. The topic for today is lists. You can find a link to the specific chapter in the book that this episode is about in the description below. So, let's jump into it. Uh, I have... Uh, how, how did you do this? GHCI, I think it is. Okay, cool. We're going to load uh, lists.hs, which is the file we're working in here. Looking at the chapter, uh, lists reminds me a lot of arrays in JavaScript, but at the same time it also feels like lists have a much more important role in Haskell than arrays play in JavaScript. So this is how you define a list. Let lost numbers. Uh, and one, two, three, six. Bam, and then you go lost numbers. At this point, the book introduces let, but I don't feel like it explains exactly what it's for. The book says that we use let to uh, define a name in the uh, GHCI, you know, this. If you've forgotten what names are, you can uh, click there for a refresher. They're kind of like constants or uh, or symbols, kind of. However, this confuses me because I can kind of uh, I can just last numbers uh, two equals uh, two three four seven, and then I can do last numbers one and last numbers two and. They both work. I just don't. I, I I don't understand why it wants me. Why the book talks about let. So if you know that, please comment down below so that you can educate me and your fellow viewers. One way that lists in Haskell are different from arrays is that uh, arrays in JavaScript allows you to mix types, but they're not allowed in in Haskell. So if Haskell was JavaScript, I would be allowed to do like four, eight, and hello. Uh, and this would be a, a valid array in JavaScript, but it's not in Haskell. So you get an error message sort of like, no instance for num char arising from the literal four. So I need to have only numbers in it. I can have strings in, in lists. Hello? Waffle cat. And that will work. Uh, they just, whoops. But they just have to be the same type in the array. When I said that, I felt like uh, lists are more fundamental to Haskell than arrays are to JavaScript. One of the things that made me feel like that was that strings are actually lists. In JavaScript, strings are like a separate thing from arrays. But in Haskell, uh, when I write like this, uh, waffle cat, that is actually just syntactic sugar for writing this cat. Bam. Poof. So in Haskell, a string is not a string, it's actually just a list of characters. Strings are lists. So a common task is to put two lists together. And because strings are lists, we can use the same functionality to uh, concatenate uh, strings as well. So we do hello waffle cat, and we use the plus plus operator to do this. Hello waffle cat. So in the last episode, I was confused about the fact that you couldn't just uh, plus uh, strings together in that in Haskell, like you can in most other programming languages. That gives you an error. Uh, but now that I know that strings are lists and you use a special operator to concatenate lists, kind of makes a bit more sense. The book warns here about a little performance caveat when uh, uh, when using the plus plus operator on long strings. 
So uh, let's imagine that this was a very, very long string for some reason. Uh, and we just wanted to add a, you know, any, a very short string at the end. Internally, Haskell will hear have to walk through the entire list character by character uh, before uh, appending the, the, the string on the right. This isn't much of a problem when you're just dealing with a like, few small strings, then you don't need to bother. But imagine like a list that is a million items long, then that will impact uh, the performance of your application. However, if you have a list that is then to the L5, then you can use something called the cons operator, which is a colon, and you can uh, add things at the beginning, like this. This, however, is instantaneous and doesn't have the same performance characteristics. Notice then that the cons operator, it takes a single number, doesn't take a list. The plus plus operator needs a, um, and needs the thing to be a list. So if we want to do the same thing with a, um, with a plus plus operator, uh, like nine here, that would fail. We would, would have to have lists on both sides. And because of this performance aspect, the, the cons operator is actually used internally by Haskell. So when I do one, two, three, this, that is just syntactic sugar. Internally, Haskell will write <laughs> will rewrite that as one cons two cons three cons empty list. Boom. And that gives us a list with one, two, three. If you want to get an element out of a list uh, at a specific index, you can use the uh, exclamation mark exclamation mark operator. So if I do like uh, two here, I'm going to get E, because that is index zero, index one, index two here. And remember that these are just lists, so I could just do one, two, three, and I could do exclamation mark, exclamation mark, uh, index two, and that would give me three, because index uh, zero, index one, index two, and the three here, and that gives us three. Just like arrays in JavaScript, uh, lists in Haskell can contain other lists. So we can do one, two, boom, 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 uh, three, four, and that can be inside another list. Da -da -da. That works. And we can get out the, uh, the second list here by going there. And we can, of course, add other lists to our list of lists by doing this, like five, six, boom. Oh no, that won't work because doing that would be like adding this. Uh, and that's not allowed uh, because this, is, this, this list here, this is a list of, of, of lists with numbers in them and adding numbers directly to them would be mixing types so what is allowed however is doing uh doing five six and a list so now we add a list of lists with numbers in them to another list that is also a list of lists with numbers in them, and that will work, hopefully. But I, I need to do plus plus. Yes. And I could also do this with the cons operator, I guess. But here I could probably actually, will this work? Yes, that would work. Lists can be compared if the stuff that uh, they contain can be compared. For instance, we can compare like five, is five larger than six? No, it's not. We can compare numbers. Therefore, we can compare lists of numbers. So we can see if, for instance, like one, uh, three, we can see if that is bigger than 
zero uh, two, which it is. In a little bit, we're going to take a look at list functions, but first, coffee break! So list functions. So let's say that we have a list like five, four, uh, three, two, one. We can call, for instance, head on it. That gives us five because this is a uh, the, the first item is a five. Think of the list like a monster, right? So this is the head. So we can do tail, and that will give us. This. This is a tail. This is the head. Tail. Head. So you ask me, how do you get the butt? You do that by saying last. That will give us one, because one is the last item. Then there is the inverse of the uh, tail function, which is init. So you just go init and uh, that will give you everything but the but if you try to do head on an empty list you'll get an error the type system of haskell allows us to catch a lot of errors at compile time but this is one of the errors that we can't and in haskell we want to avoid runtime errors as much as possible so it's good practice to make sure that we're not passing any empty arrays to functions such as head to do that, we have functions like length, which is da -da -da, and that's zero, you know, like, oh, one, two, that will give us two. There is a function that uh, actually checks if an array is empty, and that is funky enough called null. So if it's not empty, it's uh, it, null is going to be false, and if it's empty, it's going to be true. We have other functions like like reverse, which not surprisingly will reverse the list. There is a function that is called take, and take will grab uh, as many items from the beginning of the array that you specify. So I say take three, and that will take the first three items from the array. Not array, list. Ah, uh, still living in JavaScript land. And just to illustrate, if I take two, it will take the first two items. If we take zero, it will not give us an error, it will give us an empty list. What if we try to take more than exists? Okay, so it, it, it still works. If I take like a thousand, it will just give us as much as is available. There's also a kind of inverse of, of take, which is drop. So it just drops the first two items on the array and returns the rest. There are functions like minimum. Wah. Mini, mini, ma, ma, mi, ma. Which gives us the smallest number and of course there is maximum. Which, I, I can't spell these things. Maxi, maximum. Which gives us the largest number. And there is uh, things like sum, which summarizes all the numbers. And there is things like product, which will multiply all the numbers, like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120. And there is a function called lm, which checks if an element is part of uh, a given list. So let's say that we have uh, 5, 4, uh, three, two, one, and we uh, check if element six is part of that. No, it's not. However, element five is, or element three. 
Some people find this a bit hard to read, so uh, lm is often uh, called as an infix function. Uh, lm, like, uh, de, de, de. Uh, and then you just go 5, 4, 2, 1, 2. If you've forgotten about uh, infix functions, you can uh, click here for a rehearsal. But uh, they are basically functions that you place in between the arguments. Uh, any function can be called as an infix function, but there are uh, no the, the the normal infix functions are plus. Like this is an infix function. No, my battery died on my keyboard, and it. Finally, I want to point out something uh, that the book doesn't talk about, but is a very clear difference from JavaScript. Because notice that everything here are uh, f like the functions are separate from the 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 list. Uh, in Haskell, we have length that is a, just a function that takes a list, but in JavaScript, uh, length. Is, uh, is a property on the on the array object and this shows how Haskell is very much not an object oriented language it is function oriented it's functional in JavaScript and other languages that has a lot of object orientation uh, state and functions are intermingled so length and 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 the array here they are like combined together however in Haskell they are cleanly separated same thing with uh, with take for instance uh, the JavaScript equivalent uh, would be probably slice which would be like zero uh, two I think and that's it for today you have watched an episode of fun fun function I release these every Monday morning 0800 green witch meantime if you found this interesting you might want to check out the channel click below to see if it's something that you will consider subscribing to. I am MPJ, until next Monday morning, stay tuned.